The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 756. Getting interesting already. The Grand Bell Palace was constructed in a ring near the very bottom of the city, close enough that Stolik could make out faint shimmers of magic as rain struck the shield protecting the regions below. Looking down, the pit opened into a greater chasm, though a gigantic cylinder of red crystal formed a platform in the center, linked to a wall with an ornate bridge and ringed by fountains in a colossal reclining throne suspended over the abyss. The group paused next to a carefully constructed railing, taking in the sight below. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Schoenspark murmured, standing between Maple and Granada. We're so far down, Maple replied, the faceted structure reflected in her eyes. Is that a crystal palace? Starlight didn't need to wonder. Staring at it, somehow she knew. That pillar was exactly the same as a castle buried beneath Einridge, only polished and red instead of pink. Somewhere inside, calling to a sense she felt with her heart, there was another tree of harmony and another harmonic flame. That is the core of Gashiva's temple, Gwendolyn announced, padding up beside him. It is said it is hollow, but no one has ever been inside. Bananas! She excavated that whole thing and turned the hole into a city? Valet folded her ears, gazing at the circle of sky far above, and then at the stone palace ringing the bottommost reaches of the tunnel, separate from Gashiva's core. That's some dedication. You talk like you're familiar with this? Lynn tilted her head, the griffin guards standing watchfully by. Schoenspark nodded. There's one buried beneath Iron Ridge. I've never seen one from the outside, but this is exactly what I would imagine it looks like. The guards shuffle uncertainly. Interesting, Ling hummed, turning back toward a wide, shallow staircase that led deeper into the palace proper. For now, I must return to my regent and assure him I am here and unharmed. Come, we shall ensure everyone knows who you are so that you will be treated as proper guests and see to it that there are no surprises left over from Stormhof. Starlight and her friends followed, Lynn and the guards leading them through ornate, faintly curved halls that slowly circled the central shaft. Stone archways supported the carved ceiling and no small corner had been deemed too insignificant to receive artistic attention, with opaque stained glass backed by artificial lighting filling alcoves and silhouetting statues or casting patterns upon the granite floor. It looks almost like sunlight, Granada remarked as they passed the window. Most mana lighting is distinctive in color. The windows change with the time of day, Lynn remarked. They were created six centuries ago. Every age contributes their own prowess to bettering the city. Scheinsberg's ears fell slightly. Almost reminds me of Iron Ridge. They turned the final corner, entering into a huge room, protruding in a bubble of glass into the central shaft, reminiscent of the skyport's bubbles, yet gilded with golden swirls instead of steel support beams. The floor rose slowly towards the far end in a series of steps that spanned the entire room, and at the end two thrones sat overlooking the depths, one larger than the others. A scattering of golden pillars capped with flowers sat around the room, and two small streams were built into the edges where the walls met the floor, burbling quietly down from the front. The shield was rain-streaked, and Starlight blinked, her eyes wanting to wander higher and higher. But the room was occupied, and she focused instead on what was presently happening. For your bravery and heroism in defending the land and the empire, a griffin was droning, covered in magnificently poofy robes that made him look thrice as wide as he actually was, standing between the thrones and facing a crowd of around a dozen. Valet tensed slightly, and Starlight tilted her head. Were these the fighters Lynn had brought? Ahem! Lynn announced her presence, strolling towards the group. It seems I have returned at an opportune moment. The proceedings halted, everyone looking up at her. Princess! the poofy griffin exclaimed, striding forward and kneeling before her. 
It lightens our hearts to see you safe. At ease, Regent Jintong. Gwendolyn lifted his beak with an outstretched feather, surveying the rest of the assembled creatures. I see thanks are being given for the parts you played in last night's conflict at Stormhof. I extend you all my gratitude and would like to thank each and every one of you individually, but for now, please do not let me interrupt what my regent hath prepared. Ray paused and Starlight and her friends hung back with her, aware that many of the fighters' eyes were on them, but flanked by a squadron of griffin guards that made it very clear they were supposed to be there. Jin Song the griffin resumed his speech, withdrawing a medal from his robes that sparkled brightly in the distance and bestowing it upon another creature before bowing and stepping back, slowly repeating the ceremony for everyone who didn't already have one. I think those are the dudes that cleaned up our mess, Valet whispered loudly at Felicity and Senesei. I hope you're ready to get some stink eyes. Near the thrones, Lin and Jinsong both bowed, and they watched the crowd shuffle around, several kissing the back of Lin's paw. Starlight and her friends moved out of the way, as the fighters finally turned to leave, the two groups watching each other with varying levels of interest. One mare turned up her nose. Randorf, the only creature in the crowd she recognized, smiled and waved. An earth pony with a styled golden mane winked at Valet with a sharp, confident grin, a sheaf buckled to his side that contained... Is that? Stolid gasped, taking a step forward, recognizing a black handle and triangular hole as if they called down to her from across the room. Yeah, Valet agreed, eyes narrowed, stepping up beside her. There's someone swimming in that pink mare's shadow. Before Stolik could even blink in confusion, Valet broke into a swift trot, closing in on the mayor who looked slightly intimidated. Yo! Hold on, Valet commanded. You gotta sneak! Before any guards could lift a spear to do anything, or the mayor could jump away, Valet plunged a hoof down into her shadow, lifting out a cringing, blue-maned Sarosian with a glimmering metal around her neck. Valet blinked in shock. Wait! You?! Please let me go, Larceny whispered, doing everything she could to avoid Felicity and Senesei's equally shocked gazes. Before they see... <sighs> Valet stared, holding her by the mane. What is the meaning of this? Jinsong demanded, striding closer, the guards looking helplessly to an equally confused Lin for direction on who to side with. Valet waved a wing at him. Personal business, business, she and Larceny said in sync, turning to blink at each other when they realized they had both spoken. Darling, Felicity asked quietly, holding Senesee close with a wing, why are you wearing that medallion? Larceny reddened and grimaced, ears pressing back in shame. Shut up, I need to be somewhere other than here. Lynn cleared her throat, quickly taking charge of the situation. Everyone is dismissed. Jin Song, thank you for keeping things settled in my absence. I will expect a full briefing later. Please prepare my guests a more private room for anything that needs discussing. In the meantime, this place will do. But Starlight reached a hoof out as most of the fighters herded themselves away, the golden-maned earth pony with a sword leaving with them. The guard captain and Jin Song gave Lin questioning looks, and the little sphinx nodded firmly. Valet has say on who leaves and who stays. My friends have some personal business they need to attend to. Am I required immediately for anything? Before anyone could respond, a wheelchair rolled in through the doorway, bearing a bruised, bandaged, and minus one ear Prince Gazelle. Is this a bad time? he asked, voice lacking much of its usual bravado. Word reached me some acquaintances were in town. End of chapter 756